So this video is definitely different from the people watching my other videos and the content they've come to the channel for. But as I always stated, I'm going to fully cover Ashes of Creation and Arc 2 and they will be my main games that I cover and do in-depth detail videos on everything and will be supporting them long term within the community, discord and guild and generally just on my other social medias. But if you want more details than that, I would join the discord or hit up my other social medias and that's where you'll get that information. But for now, I'm not going to ramble on too much about that. I'm just going to get into everything you need to know for arc 2 in 2023 all the details other content creators might not have covered some bits you might not have heard and just every bit of information and this is coming from a guy that has 20,000 hours played on official servers i have a stupid amount of time in this game i have loved it for a long time and i've hated it and hated some of the way the devs have treated the game but all in all it is definitely a love-hate relationship but one that is just persistent and no doubt will be for years and years to come now take this from the perspective that I'm doing the video for veteran players, experienced players of Arc 1, but also people who are new to Arc 1 or potentially just going to be jumping into Arc 2, really like what the Netflix series is seeming to offer, or potentially HBO or one of the streaming services that's going to have the show on, the story, the lore, maybe watch some of the videos from other content creators that dip into the lore, or people who have just seen this and like, wow, this really looks awesome and have wishlisted Arc 2 on Steam. So with the intros out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. So what is Arc? Arc 2. Arc 2 is basically the sequel to Arc Survival Evolved and it's going to take place after the events of Genesis 2 on the planet Iraq. Both games are developed by Wildcard. Arc 2 is being made using Unreal Engine 5 but Arc 1 was on Unreal Engine 4 and it was definitely made in some really shitty situations. They were really successful and they didn't have the best look and it was definitely spaghetti code. So it is super refreshing to see that they have learned much and much over the years and we're going to be going into a next gen game with a next gen game engine to really customise and work and, and craft us hopefully an amazing experience with Arc 2. Arc 2 was first announced at the Game Awards in 2020 and is planned to release in the first half of 2023 with the possibility of finding out more about the release date at an Xbox event hinted to be happening in quarter one of this year. Now this event would be perfect if it does happen that is for Arc to give us some more concrete release dates or a potential plan or a wind at a time and some gameplay as at the minute we haven't really seen that and as Arc in November 22 tweeted that the next time we see anything Arc 2 related it would be the gameplay. If not an Arc 2 doesn't release before we could see Arc 2 at E3 2023 or it could be even in the community crunch like the Arc animated series trailer sometimes you just never know with wildcard like they could drop a little community crunch something they do once a week when the events are on and give us a bunch of information they could randomly just slap it on the youtube wildcard is such a strange company an amazing company but they're definitely not the same as others and following them for years and being highly invested as i say 20k hours is pretty sad but that's how invested i've been around these and on the socials they do things differently and it's sometimes refreshing and sometimes really fucking annoying but even away give them the time they need because we need to have a game i know it's early access but we need to have a game that is as potentially bug free as possible but then again no wild card it's going to be a clusterfuck so what does it mean when they say epic story well they've said it's going to feature the voices of vin diesel as santiago and i'm going to butcher this name auli cravalio as his daughter mika all of which this will take place in a new world a new planet of adapt which will have new flora fauna which we've never seen in the likes of art game before you've got to understand i don't don't really understand to be honest how it's going to be arc because arcs are kind of these little biomes that have implanted with life and sent out to come back to earth you know to basically save it and make it thrive again but we're not on an arc anymore we're on a fucking gigantic planet with other planets and moons around us so potentially it's really going to stem out from arcs into planets but the arcs will maybe come into play at some point but it just opens up so much questions about the story and where they're going to go now i am a pvp player and i'm heavily into pvp and the competitive hardcore side i do appreciate the little dabs of pve but for any pve players out there this is definitely going to be really good for you as well so i do like it i'm just hoping they can balance it correctly but it is going to be hard for them we did have some people complaining about combat and saying they wanted the same combat as arc one now if you really want the same melee combat obviously i know how complex the metas and angling of turrets or using andrasarkuses or sea spinning or saddles and bps and techniques and all these fucking bugs and glitches it is such a complex 
complex game, but when you see someone just hitting with a hatchet or a sword, it just looks like stupid melee combat from a first glance, and people just think it's playing with dinosaurs. It is so complex, this game. But people didn't like that they'd said Arc 2 is initially going to be third person only, and it's going to include new traversal mechanics such as mantling and free climbing, parkour, sliding and swinging, potential flips and dodges and things like this. I think that's what it needs, because if you can add the depth of what the game has with the most basic melee combat until you add in the tech and the weapons and the dinos and the, the combinations and the buffs if you then add in this awesome really advanced skill based combat this game's going to be fucking awesome but i just don't understand why people can argue that this isn't a good thing now okay i get some people want to play first person but if you're really pvp and, and you're part of the pvp community i don't think that's the best thing you really want to see what's behind you you need to see what's going on and i do like to mix and match first and third person and they're both valid so if they had personally just went with first person i think it would have been a shit show i don't think it would have been right and it would have been awkward and clunky and i'm personally not for that i think the third person is going to be really good and i mainly play a third person so i would say just give it a chance and see where it goes and i think in 2023 on unreal engine 5 with our computers getting better and new consoles come on man like do we really want to be running around jumping like fucking sticks and having these potato players we want this we need to go into a new generation of gaming and just accept that arc one isn't going to be what it was and we need to just embrace it's going to be different and, and move forward and, and this is someone who's really into arc and appreciate it but at the same time some things have to change and some things have to advance and if they don't wild Card will go to shit we really need to support them in this and i do think they're doing a good job and i do believe it's the right direction but down the line there could be modest that change this and we could actually get first person back in the game but that is not a definite as of now it stands at third person only then we go on to character progression now in arc one it's basically now it's so advanced in game you just want to get to max level 105 get your chibi levels do some ascensions and bosses get your engrams and then get your tech because you can't play without it and at the beginning it was actually really advanced i remember playing the days when fucking tech was a myth you heard of it and no one really had it you had to run boss battles and you could barely run a gen and some tech turrets were filled because it was rag hard alpha or some other boss battle on the island some bullshit there was no element gachas there was no farming element it's just stupidly easy now and the rates weren't the standard one times that actually increased so it's not standard one times when I was playing it was it was terrible and we were raising 30 gigs on primitroffs it was just ridiculous so I do think the character progression definitely needs to be a little bit more advanced because I think players are more savvy now and with YouTube and everything blown up I definitely think they need to make sure it's more detailed and by the sounds of it we're gonna get that and from what I'm seeing the character progression is said to be both experience points from gameplay but it's also these knowledge points these knowledge points are gained by accomplishing key objectives and complex completing new unique challenges in the world. Your character will also be able to progress through new skill trees which will include active abilities, perks and passive benefits. Could this also be similar to the skill trees we've seen in Atlas? Think about that. Now I dipped into Atlas and played a lot of Atlas because it was a bit more advanced when it came to the combat side and you know, I was kind of coming to the end of my time with Ark which I currently am doing my last playthrough and then I'm, I'm going to call it an Ark one and it's been a good journey but I really do think Atlas is a shit show at the minute just because of snail game and you know the mix up with devs but their combat and the skill trees and the perks I really like now it's a primitive version but I do believe it's what we're going to see in Arc 2 and I think it's going to be advanced on with these millions of combinations that are on about and I do think this is what we need because not only does it make you want to play with people you need to play with people because you can't possibly unlock everything and do everything on your own which makes it a more community driven game and if you can get a more community driven game more than Arc 1 really is at the minute that's brilliant and it really will help the game succeed we just need to know more about them and at the minute we don't so i'm going to base it and say kind of going to get that dark souls combat but we're also going to get them atlas style perks buffs and passives and i think that's the right direction again now what do we know about the world of Ada? the world will now include dynamic world events which would both natural and unnatural and are going to happen even if the player is not in the area the player can also choose whether to interact with the event or not with interacting giving the player chances for which they will be rewarded so you don't have to be forced into these which is bringing in that sandbox experience sometimes it might negatively affect you by not getting involved in them so most people will get involved with them but i, I like the dynamic ever-changing world i think it's going to be a more advanced version of osds um, and potentially you know the genesis biome where you go into rockwell's heart and a bunch of other advanced things from newer generation games and i, I think that's a decent way kind of mixing in the pve games that kind of on gen 2 the games really balance out perfectly and are good for farming so i don't think it'll take away from the pvps and it also gives them pves a really rewarding experience which is nice 
nice and balanced and really helps the whole community PvX, PvE, PvP, if you get what I'm saying. The combat in Arc 2 will also be vastly different from what we've seen in Arc Survival Evolved, and this is going to be largely debated, and it currently has been largely debated since the announcement. The combat for Arc 2 will be more like you would see in Dark Souls game or kind of Atlas, I'm getting them vibes, and it's going to include target lock, blocks, dodges, combos, even staggers and special attacks. Could it be similar to what we see in Atlas? I think so. I do believe, like I've said before, they're going in that direction, mixed in with the Dark Souls and really skill based combat. I think it's going to be decent and it is bringing a lot more in. That's before you even dip into the super advancedness and the, the complexity of the game when you're bringing in Tames and the other buffs when it comes to the crafting system. No longer is every weapon and tool going to be the same. You're now going to be able to customise them, change the looks, the functionality. It's even been said that there will be millions of different combinations when it comes to this. So the PvE in this game, or potentially the PvP, is going to be stupid. So customisable, no real meta builds. Maybe that's what they're trying to do, break out of the meta mould and really advance things. No, no doubt we're going to get some metas, but this really means that it's skill based. You don't know what you're going up against and even someone on foot, that foot PvP, the premium PvP could be so fucking brilliant and I do like this. Is balancing going to be an issue? No doubt, but I don't think you can ever get perfect balance, especially with the intelligence of some of the people playing the game. They're always going to break shit. They've just got to do the best they can with what they've got and I'm looking forward to this as well. So dipping into the PvE or the AI and when we're talking about hostile creatures, the AI has been massively improved since Ark Survival Evolved. It's no longer going to be they'll just attack you due to being in their sight. They're going to now track you. They're going to hunt you by sight, sound and smell. Players will be able to hide using camouflage, so a super advanced version of say um, using ghillie or some of the stews and environmental obstructions and masking your scent, so potentially water, going through water and losing the scent that way, or hiding where the wind wouldn't push towards someone. We really don't know, it does sound fairly advanced. And the pathing for creatures has also been updated, meaning they can manoeuvre around obstacles, be them the player, made or natural. So this is really good stuff to hear, because I'm going to be honest, nine times out of ten, no matter how advanced you are, the PvE in this game fucks you. You're hitting a raid, the bed's being wiped, shit, dumb stuff's happened, you need to get back your four ball, potentially an area, spawn of a rapid, get in a tribe, you're running through redwoods or an area, and boom, them glowing eyes comes at you, it slaps you with one bite and you knock the fuck out and you that humiliation of saying I can't get to you, I'm knocked out by PvE and I'm getting mauled and they're not they've knocked me out of full torpor but my legs broke but they've just left me asleep. Scorpion slap, there's just wrapped it, there's just so much dumb shit. So this is really, really gonna be hard for the PvPers and enjoyable for the PvEs and yeah, good shit, because we want that hardcore experience. I'm looking forward to a more advanced AI and, and this is refreshing to see. And not only will players have to deal with hostile creatures in the world of Adder, we will also have to deal with the Aratai, who are basically the natives you've seen in the videos playing of the planet who will hunt you down and attack you and they also have their own teams they can ride. So kind of in the Genesis boss battle you've seen them coming in, like it's not them, it's different obviously, but I imagine they're going to be like versions of them with the team, so kind of NPCs of the world, more advanced than the teams because you'd say also oh, they're just going to be another team. Yeah, they are kind of going to be another team, more ascending being, but I think there'll be missions and areas and there'll be a lot of advancements within their AI. So I think fighting the Arate, or if I butchered the name, the blue kind of Rockwell looking people. And I'm wondering if Rockwell, as he said, he can see into the future. Does he have a part in this? Did he create them? Did he get to this planet before us? I really don't know. But um, I do think this is going to be really interesting to see how it plays out and potentially see if you can befriend them or you can get some of their traits or teams and you know the breeding and the mutations and all the other shit it's going to be really advanced in this game so it's going to be some good stuff all of this has been created in unreal engine 5 meaning the world's going to be more lifelike and realistic compared to the first game which will include you know the foliage which will react to passing wildlife potentially change and flow differently water which will flow downstream and will now flow around obstacles in the water smoke and particle effects which will be affected by physical forces and a much more improved life lighting system that comes with Unreal Engine 5, potentially using Lumin, which means also we're going to have a more realistic day and night cycle with real-time ambient light and shadows that's potentially going to affect the advanced AI and just the way we do stuff. Our I and I is going to be a thing, no doubt. Hopefully they're not and they do something where we can't turn off the bushes and every structure and they really mech the PvE part of the PvP, so it's a massive ball ache and just more intense game. Man, I do swear to the intenseness of the game, I know that's not for everyone, but remember, you've got not have the casual PvE servers if it's not something you want. Arc Survival Evolved is 
said to be going back to primitive levels people really expected just bows and arrows and some cloth gear now we need to take the perspective of wildcard and what they deem is primitive are long necks primitive probably i would class them as primitive because end game you just not fucking use long necks really in pvp and do you class fabby's potentially as primitive i would and i do believe we're going to have some kind of primitive version of a fabby or a bolt gun maybe some type of long neck definitely crossbows and we're going to need some type of turret defense you can't just have stone structures unless they go down the route of last oasis or potentially I suppose atlas but yeah i mean even then you've got puckles on atlas uh, or, or turret primitive i would say they're fairly primitive they're pretty shitty and maybe they could have a, a, a more plant version of auto turret to make it really basic but we need offline ray protection we can't have it where there's no turret to defense as long as they don't bring tech in and tech saddles and jetpacks and all this i think we can keep it primitive like the first days when the game first launched or even going into the launch of rag without the tech i think this would be decent and i, th I think they can definitely pull it off but don't expect them not to have long necks and just being cloth and a few axes the game is going to be a little bit more advanced than that and have a little bit more depth in my honest opinion arc 2 is also going to be cross platform for modding for creatures and items and gameplay features and the maps and support for modded servers due to a partnership with mod.io so modding is going to be a thing early on and no doubt wildcard will fail and flop in some areas and they'll be able to sift off and take and reward the community which is just going to advance the game that much more it is going to be early access there's going to be a lot of bugs so don't expect this to be a perfect game when it comes out we know wildcard we know how they deal with shit but just stick by them and, and know we support them and going into this game just enjoy it all in all what do you guys think about arc 2 are you excited for it do you want to support it do you want to get involved and i have a lot more videos coming about arc 2 in the next couple of weeks so definitely tune into them drop a like hit that comment section and let me know what you think about the video and as always i really appreciate you watching the video and i'll catch you in the next one cheers